Okay, what I want to do today is go through and prove something that you already know. But we're going to prove it using math. Uh, and what we're going to do here today is we're going to go through and prove that the center of gravity or the center of mass of a long uniform rod is right in its center. Now, you might already know that. I mean, it's, it's just this balance point. You take a, a rod, something like this, and you find that, hey, right, right there in the middle, it balances. Uh, but what I want to go through and do is, is prove this using math. And while that might seem a little bit trivial, uh, it's going to set us up for some things that we need to understand moving forward in the future. Plus, we get to use calculus. So obviously, that's going to be a ton of fun. So when we're dealing with center of gravity, uh, we always need to have some sort of reference position. And so what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to go through and I'm going to say that the left edge of this rod is a position of zero. That's a pretty pathetic zero, but we'll, we'll be okay, I promise. And so what we're going to go through and do is prove that the, the center of mass of this rod is at some position in the middle of the rod. And that would work out mathematically to be L, the length of the rod, over 2. So I'm telling you right now, the result to this derivation is going to be L over 2, provided we do it right. Uh, and I'm also going to go through and say that this rod has some mass M. Uh, now the fact of the matter is the, the mass of the rod is not going to affect our result, but we're going to put it in here just to keep our, our understanding of what's going on a little bit more physically rooted in this problem. Because as soon as we take mass out of this, we wind up dealing with something called centroids as opposed to actual centers of gravity. And, and that's that's more of a mathy thing. I want to keep this physics based and, and look at center of gravity. So, of course, to look at center of gravity, let's let's first talk about our equation for center of gravity. And that is... So we've got this equation for center of gravity, and this is something that we've seen before, we've used before when dealing with the center of gravity for, for multiple objects or individual particles. And here we're going to be looking along the x-axis, so I'll put a little cute little x right there. Um, and so we're looking at our center of gravity along this, this horizontal axis. The problem is we have one large distribution of mass here. What we don't have, like we've seen in the past, are individual particles at individual and discrete points. So we have to approach this in a, a slightly different manner than, than we normally would. And so to do that, what I want to do is I want to look at not this entire rod, okay? Because the rod has lots of different little particles of mass at lots of different positions. There's a little bit of mass right here that is at a, a small distance from our position of zero. There's some mass over here that's at a little bit bigger distance away from our position of zero. And then we've got some mass way out here. It's at a really big distance away from our position of zero. We've just got this whole, you know, chunk of mass. You could even say it's a bunch of mass distributed at an infinite number of different points from a radius of zero to L. That'll be important later. Uh, so we have to approach this in a little bit different manner than normal. And so what I want to choose to do is look at all the mass that's at just a single spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slice of this rod right there, an infinitely thin slice with a marker that's going to work for me. There we go. Good marker. And so this infinitely thin slice, I know the, the marker isn't infinitely thin, but you, you couldn't see if it was. So, you know, this is an approximation. This infinitely thin slice, all the mass on the infinitely thin slice is right at the same spot. And you're thinking, well, if it's infinitely thin, it can't have any mass. Haha, <laughs> but it does. And I'll prove that to you in a moment here. Uh, but all this mass is right at one little spot. And that spot is at some position we're simply going to call X. Uh, my line's not straight. Oh, well. You'll make it. So this mass is all at some position or distance x away from our position of zero. And all this mass is crammed into this infinitely thin little slice. And I'm going to say this infinitely thin little slice has a thickness. And you're saying, or thinking to yourself right now, no, it has no thickness. You keep saying it's infinitely thin. And it's true, it's infinitely thin, but it's not zero. I'm going to call the thickness of this slice dx. And you'll see why that's important in just a moment here. So what I want to go through and do is work out the mass of our infinitely thin slice. 
And you're thinking to yourself, hey, it has no mass. Uh, but it does, my friend. I'll show you how. The mass of a slice is a slice of our rod. This mass, I'm going to call it M. Realize it's not the same M as what's up here. And we'll distinguish them in just a moment here. This, this mass of just this infinitely thin little slice. I want you to think of this as having a mass per unit length. Realize this mass, the total mass of the rod, is distributed over the entire length of this rod. So we have a mass per unit length, that is m, the total mass, over the length. And the actual length that we're dealing with is dx. So we have this mass per unit length. And the actual, right here, and the actual length of the rod. Or the length of the slice, I should say, not the rod. Now, obviously we have two different M's here, and this is going to be hard to distinguish, but I want to make a um, point here. The mass that we're dealing with here, this is an infinitely small amount of mass. It's non-zero, but it's infinitely small. So it's not really some, some large mass M. It's an infinitely small piece of our total mass. So we're simply going to call it dm. So the mass of this slice is dm. Now, you'll see it looks like we're starting to set up an integral here. So just for funsies here, let's let's go through and, and integrate this thing and let's see what, what it is we come up with here. All right? Just just for fun. Just just play along with me here. Let's integrate our function dm. So I want to look at all of our little slices, follow the function m over l dx, and I want to look at every little slice all the way along this entire rod. That means I want to look at the definite integral from 0 to l. And so let's go through and evaluate this integral. Realize I've got an m over l dx, so I'm integrating with respect to x. m and l's, those are constants, so I'm going to pull those out front here, m over l, leave them in the front yard. 0 to L of dx. Well, that's an easy one here. Okay, I've got M over L times X. I evaluated my integral from 0 to L, and this is going to give me M over L times L. Oh, wait a tick here. What's going on? The lengths cancel out, and we get that when we integrate all of our teeny tiny little masses along the entire rod, we get the total mass. We know the total mass is M. We started with this value right here. And now we're saying, hey, the mass is the mass. So we haven't solved the problem here, uh, but what we've done below this line is, one, we've proven calculus works. We've also proven that our setup works here. And I know it's, it's, it's kind of a quick shot going through introducing this idea of mass per unit length and multiplying this by some infinitely small thickness. But I want you to realize, the math checks out. This works. This is this is not me just making up silliness. But realize we have not solved our problem yet. All we've done is we've come up with the mass of a single slice. But I want to go back to our center of gravity equation here. Realize we can look at each individual slice and plug those in both in our numerator up here where we've got mass times position and in our denominators. So when we look at our center of gravity in the x-axis, in our numerator, we're going to have an infinite sum of masses at an infinite number of different positions from 0 to L. So I'm simply going to show this as the infinite sum of d m, that's our masses of each individual slice, times x. So we've got the infinite sum of dmx. And if this was like 2002, I could make a really sweet rap joke about this, but none of you would get it anymore. So, sad day. Oh well, moving on. We've got our center of gravity, our numerator up here, Mr. dmx, what? And then on the denominator, we have the sum of all masses. Well, lo and behold, we already worked out the sum of all masses, and it was flat out given to us in the beginning of this problem. It's simply just m. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our function dm and we're going to plug it in right here and we're going to integrate this thing. Now be super careful not to drop this little x as we go through on our, our calculus adventure. 
So you got CG in the x-axis is the infinite sum of this function right here. That's M over L dx times x. I'll put in parentheses just so we don't forget it because nothing like leaving that x out. Um, yeah, more DMX jokes. Uh, so CG, x. These are constants. I'm going to pull these out before I cancel them out because it, it just feels right to do it in that order. I don't, I don't know why. Over m. And then I've got the infinite sum of... I'll change the order of these because this hurts to leave it like that. It, it hurts my brain. I don't like it. Not one bit. Uh, and realize we're looking at all of these slices from 0 to L. I could have even made that point farther up here. From 0 to L. But I didn't. I waited till now. We'll write it in up here though just because I know there's bugging like one of you out of, out of what I'm sure is going to be millions of people who watch this. One of you was bothered by the fact I didn't put a 0 to L right there. But it's okay. Fear not. We get a cancel party here. Center gravity in the x-axis is 1 over L times the integral of x, which is, wait for it, 1 half x squared. We're going to have to evaluate this thing from 0 to L. Oh, we're getting close here, folks. CG in the x-axis, that's an x, I swear, is 1 over L times 1 half times L squared. And we got a cancel party, and we get the center of gravity in the x-axis for our rod that is a long thin uniform rod is going to be equal to wait for it l over two and the crowd goes wild you learned something today well no you already knew this but you learned how to derive this now you can prove it okay uh so this is is one of the So looking at this problem, I want you to realize this is a, a real good application of, call it physical calculus, if you will, uh, in, in going through and proving something that we often simply take it for granted, and that is that the, the center of mass of a rod is right in the middle. And I know you can sit there and try to justify to yourself, well, the center mass is in the middle because there's as much mass over here as there is over there, but that's, that's not always the case for every shape. Uh, we'll, we'll see that as the issue when we get to both cones and and wedges here coming up but for now this is the center of mass of a rod or center of gravity of a rod and that's all for now